guys, Andy Elliott. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. Now, a lot of the times you see me, I'm talking to people that come in from other industries, they're kicking ass, they're doing great. This is actually one of my coaches, okay? Now, I want to tell you something right now. I've got some awesome coaches. We've got about 100 coaches in our company, and the Elliott Group has grown really big. Everybody always asks, Andy, how do I get a job with the Elliott Group? And I always say, you have to be inside the coaching program. Because if I can't change your life, how can I expect you to come and change other people's lives? with me. Like, doesn't make sense. Um, no disrespect to Grant Cardone, but I don't have a sales team selling my training. I have people that have literally totally recreated their lives inside of my coaching program that are a product of the product. And then they every day help us grow, um, and be a part of this great mission. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, this guy's right here, Brendan, this is Brendan. He is, um, 24 years old now? 24, yeah. Yeah, 24 years old. Um, he's been with me um, for about four years through coaching and being with us. Is that yeah. all right? Perfect. And I, I want I want Brendan to tell a story, okay? Um, I know a lot of you guys, I've had, I get, I get, 100 emails a day and people are like dude you know and a thousand dms a day They're like andy i want to work for you andy i want to work for you or andy how do i change my life and you know we got a lot of younger guys but really this applies for everybody in life like if you're living and you're alive this advice brendan's going to give to you um he's a seven figure earner for my company he does really well and you know i remember when i first found him um you were struggling in car sales yeah. uh, and you were like dude i want to make it and by the way, I don't care what industry you're in. So forget about the car sales part, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about if you're in any industry right now, what were some of the things that you did? Introduce yourself. Tell everybody, yeah. you know, kind of what's going on now, but then back us in to kind of the first time you reached out to me and kind of what you did to build your life up to where you're at now mm -hmm. because your story is is awesome. And we have amazing stories in our company. I just honestly a lot of times don't share them. Yep. We share other people's stories, but not our own people's stories. We're very stories. fixated on helping other people. Yeah, like we're always yeah. like, don't we don't need anything. We just want to help you. But today, I was like, Brennan, I think you need to tell your story. So, Brennan, let's rock and roll. Um, Hell yeah. Ba back us into, you know, like what what's life like now? You're in Scottsdale, Arizona. You used mm -hmm. to travel out here to train. Um, you yeah. got your girl, Gia, right? You know, you That's and her right. have been together for, you know, high school sweethearts, right? Yeah, pretty much. Met, well, met a couple years ago, four years ago. Yeah. Right at right at high school. Okay. Yeah. Know? So walk us through this. Tell yeah. us how how awesome is your life right now? Badass, bro. Best better than I ever would have imagined. And honestly, dude, if you would have told me a couple of years ago that I would be sitting in this chair and I'd be on your team, I wouldn't even have believed you. And uh, it's funny because you you hired me. If I I would have never asked because I would have never seen my self worth that high. But that's been the biggest impact you've had on me is like raising my self-worth. Now you see, we were just talking about how I'm growing and I'm doing things I never thought I would and I'm carrying myself different. Well, that's all because you gave me the example. You know, like I'll go into my story a little bit, but one of the things I thought about when, I, when we planned this was I was like, dude, the biggest lesson I've learned from you is about leadership. And the funniest thing is anytime my, I screwed up my life, it was because I didn't have a leader. Anytime my life was going really good, I had a great leader. There was two phases where I was really kicking ass in life, you know? So, but anyway, my name's Brendan. Been with uh, all AE for two years now. That's right. Been crushing it. And uh, yeah, I was a product of the training, was selling cars. I'll get into that. But my story started, I was, uh, you know, I'm just going to be really raw, bro. Because I, like I, feel, I feel like you know a little yeah. bit of my story, but I want to share it to people because I want people to know that they're qualified no matter where they come from, you know? And I, I feel like I don't talk about it enough. So my parents are struggling like drug addicts alcoholics all that stuff mm -hmm. i actually am super proud of my mom she's getting clean she's you know getting off drinking she's so inspired by what i'm doing i'm still close with her but that's about it um my parents were always like struggling with this from zero to like i would say when i went to college you know I was, it was just a train wreck bro six years old they get divorced I'm jumping back and forth. Both my parents are trying to have custody of me. So they're like entertaining me, right? They're like, hey, the grass is greener over here. It's greener over here. I'm going back and forth. So I'm, I'm always introvert. I've always been introvert until I started training with you, right? And uh, I was jumping back and forth between schools. I didn't have any friends because I knew I wasn't going to stay anywhere too long. All this went on until I was in, I was in high school. You know, my, my mom got remarried to a stepdad. And they were in a school district where I was like, hey, I like it. It's a small school. I can blend in. Not a lot of pressure. Let's go. So I moved in with them. And uh, no one in my family had money. No one, in, no one in my family's ever earned over probably 30 grand a year, which is why I, the biggest struggle I have was low limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think, you know, they told stories 
about people who made a hundred grand. And I thought, dude, if I could ever do that, that'd just be, I don't even know what I do, what I do with You'd myself, you know? Yeah. So I moved out there and my mom had just, you know, started dating this new guy. They combined all their wealth. They bought a house. They bought like, you know, a couple acres of land. So like I was excited. Um, I go to high school and I'm still kind of introverted. It's not what it turns out to be with my family. Like, you know, my stepdad's crazy. I can't do anything cause I'm freaking 13, 14 years old, but my whole life, I always needed something to be obsessed with. And for me, my escape through every, every, all the pain I ever had was basketball. So from like five, six years old, I picked one up and I would shoot and I'd be by myself. And my mom worked at a college. So I would go to college, like I would go to work with her in the summer season during school and I would shoot for eight hours a day and I'd play with people that were 10 years older than me. And I just kept working on it. And in high school, I realized my way out was gonna be basketball. So I started busting my ass. I said, dude, I gotta get out of here. I gotta like just establish my own, my own person. I've never you know, scored over a B in any class I've ever taken. School's not my thing. I was like, I'm going to go pro play basketball. So junior year, um, I turned it on. I got, I got psycho obsessed and I was like, I'm going to go, I'm going to get a college scholarship. I'm going to go D one and I'm going to go, I'm going to go play pro. And, uh, I didn't talk to anybody. I put the blinders on, um, ended up crushing it. My senior year, I got, I got an offer. I, I worked my ass off. I got an offer to play D two. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. As you're listening to my top coach, Brendan, right now, kind of explain a little bit about um, you know, what he's gone through since he's with me right now, some changes that he's had in his life, and some things that have actually helped people scale and grow. If you're wanting to turn your annual income into your monthly income, you're really wanting to kill it. You see the cell phone number below? Just shoot him a text message. Just say, hey, Brennan, I saw you on Andy's podcast. I was wanting to ask you this question, or what do you think I should do? Guys, don't let his age fool you, okay? I'm going to tell you this. He's a seven-figure earner. He kicks ass. He's really good to his girl. He's a great guy. He has high standards. And like I said, he's, he's trained with me for the last four or five years. Time and experience means nothing. So I'd love to see what we can help you with. If you need something, text the number below. Let's get back to the video. So I move, get out, get out of the house. And I will say this too, right? Like this goes back to leadership. I never had good leaders in my life ever, not, not a day. But in high school, my coach, my basketball coach was my leader. Mm, he, he accounted for me actually having a good life for, from like 14, 15, 16, 17. He was the one guy that I looked up to. Was he easy on you or did he push you hard? He pushed me hard as shit, bro. It's important. Yeah, crazy, man. But uh, yeah, so I go to college and something happens when I go to college, man. I, I, take, I took the summer off and I'm waiting to go into my, my freshman year playing D2 basketball. And I started just hanging around the wrong people. And I start be adulting and I want to fit in. I want to get girls. I want to like, you know, I want to do all that cool, cool stuff. I want to party with my friends who aren't focused on their future. So I go down this bad habit of drinking, doing drugs. I got hooked on it, man. And for about three years, I just was fucking my life up. So like literally over that summer, I got so bad that I dropped out mm -hmm. my first couple months in college. And I was hanging out with, you know, one of my parents and I was going out with my friends. And I was doing all this crazy stuff. I, I wrecked a couple cars. I should have died in one, of, one in a car accident. I, uh, I got arrested a couple times and I just, I hated myself. I honestly hated myself. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I met you that I started to turn it around. So to get into that, I literally was working nine to fives after I, gra I got out of college, right? I dropped out. Um, my parents were let down. Everybody around me like didn't believe in me anymore. I became a loser. I was like, well, no one cares. I'm just gonna do my own thing. I'm gonna grab an apartment, pay bills, you know, drink and, and not care. Yeah. I went down that road for two years. And one day I woke up and I was like, I hate, I hate myself. And I honestly considered ending it all. I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I go to a bookstore and I buy a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, mm -hmm. right? And I read the book and it's, it shows a lady on one side talks about a paradigm shift and it shows a lady on one side and you flip it over and it's a di it's the same photo, but he points out some stuff and you realize it's a completely different photo. Mm -hmm. And basically the whole point is it's not about what happens to you. It's about how you, how you see it, how you mm -hmm. translate it and you can change your, your, your viewpoint on life in one second. Yeah. And it woke me the fuck up immediately. I don't know what happened, but I was like, Oh my God, like I can look at everything I've been through as the reason I'm never going to be a winner or this can be my story. Mm. So I start, I start working out. 
I start taking better care of myself. I start cutting out alcohol, drugs, all that stuff. I'm completely alone. Right around this time I met Gia. Mm-hmm. This was right around time that I self I started to self develop and it just so happened I met the girl I'm still with today going mm-hmm. on four years awesome. that has changed my life. And she support she's the one person who's never never doubted me. Yeah, Always lo- believed in yeah, me. She right? loves your ass. Yep. L- lucky lucky sound bitch, yeah. yeah. But right after that, I get hired on a car lot. I tell Gia, like when we get together, I'm like, Hey, we're gonna go through some financial troubles, I'm gonna try out this car lot thing. I met the guy at a bar, you know, he owned a car lot. So I go into it and my first four months, I'm just getting my ass kicked. I'm getting embarrassed every day. I have no idea what I'm doing. There's no leadership in there. I mean, this dealership is just the the worst example, you know, Mm -hmm. it would trigger you. I understand. (laughs) Trust me. I see it every day. But yeah, so after four or five months, the manager approaches me. One of the managers that really didn't, didn't like me. He comes up to me and he goes, Hey man, we're going to put in a new quota where if you sell under eight cars, you're fired. And I can't wait to see you out of here. I'm so tired of seeing your face around here. And something about that took me back to when I used to play sports and someone would shit talk me and I just want to freaking burn their eyes out. And I went home and I looked up on YouTube how to get better at selling cars. And the first video that popped up was one of your videos. And I went nuts for four hours straight. I studied and I wrote everything down. See, you, you do something that most people don't do. You go, you can speak to anybody. Like you can level up any, literally any human being, you can level them up. Like I needed to know, I needed the fundamentals. You said, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, work out in the morning before you go to work. So you're in a great mood for 12 hours. And, and then everything else that you taught was just continued to level me up. But like, even hearing that, I never would have thought that. I was like, oh, this guy's right. Grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. I write it down. What's written will be retained. Mm -hmm. And I just went beast mode. That next month I did 20 cars, right? Blew everybody in my store. They had no fucking clue what was going on. They thought I was getting lucky, right? Mm -hmm. I get my paycheck and it's $8,000. And I'm driving home that night and I start crying. And I called Gia and I said, you're not going to believe this. We're behind on our bills. I just paid all of them for the next two months. I said, we're going to be fucking rich. We're going to become successful. I said, I could probably make a hundred grand this year if I did this every single month. And I didn't make a hundred grand that year. I made like two fifty, mm-hmm. because what happened was I, I reached out to your, to your team at the time. And I talked to actually Mikey Abelos mm-hmm. and then he actually gave you the phone and then you got me onto the program and in everything just ever since was like a fucking rocket ship, bro. Like I, I took off, started killing it, started doing 30 plus cars a month, making 20, 25 grand every single month. And uh, people in my store hated me, bro. I came out to events, they made fun of me. Everybody at, at that dealership had been there for more than 10 years. And none of them have ever done a 30 car month or made 30 grand in a month. And they still made fun of me, but I didn't care. I showed up, stacked money in my bank account. And uh, I went to four seminars before we talked about a job. Mm-hmm. I remember the first seminar, me and Gia cried vigorously, not in the seminar. I was like, Hey, hold it together, babe. You know, but in the airport, we started crying because we had just, you should introduce us to an entire new life. We never thought even existed. That was, that was really what got me from like 10 to 25, 30 plus. Cause I erased my identity, what I thought I was worth. And then, uh, you know, I, I remember I DM'd you and I was telling you all about my story. I remember the second seminar I went to, I waited till everybody cleared out. And I think this is when you decided to hire me because a couple of weeks later you, you reached out to me because you said, I like your intentions. I like that you didn't come up to me and say, Hey, I want to work for you and make money. I, I came up to you and I said, Hey, I don't need anything from you. I just want to thank you for, because you're the only leader I've ever had that steered me in the right direction. You've helped me get clean. You've helped me make money. You're going to change my entire bloodline. And, uh, I told you, you said, what's your goal? I said, my goal is to lead people. My goal is to be the example. My goal is to do what you're doing, what exactly what you're doing and what you did for me. And I remember that. And you DM me a couple weeks later and you're like, hey, you ever thought about moving to Arizona? And uh, I remember we came out to the next event. We talked about it. And as soon as you presented the opportunity to me, at the time, I probably was looking like, you know, in the face, like I was freaking terrified. But I got in the car, drove down the road, and I told G, I said, we're moving to Arizona. And I went home and I quit my job. And uh, the rest is history, dude. I started two years ago. And the stories, the lives that I've been able to change and the stuff I've seen happen, like, I can't even believe this is my life. I honestly can't. 
you know. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. As you're listening to my top coach, Brendan, right now, kind of explain a little bit about, um, you know, what he's gone through since he's with me right now, some changes that he's had in his life, and some things that have actually helped people scale and grow. If you're wanting to turn your annual income into your monthly income, you're really wanting to kill it. You see the cell phone number below? Just shoot him a text message. Just say, hey, Brennan, I saw you on Andy's podcast. I was wanting to ask you this question, or what do you think I should do? Guys, don't let his age fool you, okay? I'm going to tell you this. He's a seven-figure earner. He kicks ass. He's really good to his girl. He's a great guy. He has high standards. And like I said, he's, he's trained with me for the last four or five years. Time and experience means nothing. So I'd love to see what we can help you with. If you need something, text the number below. Let's get back to the video. Well, number one, crazy freaking story. And by the way, I've witnessed it all. So like, yeah. now, now you guys know it. And it's amazing. I mean, because this is truly breaking the bloodline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're changing everything. Yeah. Um, let's talk about proximity of being around the right people, mm -hmm. right? Like when you would come out and you would train. Yeah. You know, we do these master closers. So till to this day, mm -hmm. the the events that Brendan came out to. Yeah. The four that he came out to that helped him scale to that quarter of a million in a place that didn't believe in him. They would make fun of him. Those events we still do them every month. Yeah. So you guys can always reach out to him. He'll give you a list of all the events coming up. That's what they do to people when they come out here and change. Exactly. Um, you remember how every time you would come out, you, you would always kind of like be at the end of like a run. Yes. And then you would and then you would come here and then yep. you'd be ready to roll and then you'd kind of go to an end. Yeah. Um, play around like how important you believe now because you're a coach now. Like mm -hmm. you help people and you, and you you tell them when somebody tells you what they're struggling with, you're like, dude, listen, like we've got 200 programs, but like this is the best one for you based on what you said. Yeah. Right. Can we talk about the power of proximity? Totally. Of like of like when you were around um, people that didn't believe in you, yeah. right? You you were on your own. And versus the way that you feel now being surrounded by badasses in a crazy environment in mm -hmm. which human excellence is demanded. Yeah. Right. Um, so true. You know, or, or inspired. It's like, it's like, like, how do you feel like if someone's struggling right now, how important do you think it is? Or somebody's not getting the results mm -hmm. they want about being around the right people, like what it did for you personally yep. and what you see it do for other people. Well, people don't understand the importance of proximity because it's like, it's not, it's not evident. It's not like a right away thing, but over time, just the impact it has is insane. And that, that's what happened to me. Like I would, I came out here and I'd never cleared $10,000. I went back home and I started making 20 because there was something about this place. There's something about walking around this place and, and just the, the way that you spoke about the future, the, the way that you poured it, you cared about people. Like, it's fun. It's funny because I was sitting in there with a, with a 99 percenter mindset, you know, I was sitting in that room with having been programmed for 21 years to, to not believe in myself, to that becoming a million, a first generation millionaire was impossible and something only, you know, movie stars did. Mm -hmm. And I had all these beliefs that you, inst you, the first hour of the seminar, you, you obliterated all those. And I felt like I wanted to run through a wall or like mm -hmm. punch somebody in the face, you know, that's awesome. But, um, over time, man, just, I went, I went back and what would happen is people in my store would program me. Hey, that's not real. Hey, you can't, you can't live like that. Hey, you can't do all this stuff. And I would hold, I would hold off. Like I, I, I wouldn't let it affect me, but I, over time, like just hanging around people with low frequencies mm -hmm. who don't self-develop. And when you're hanging around freaking losers, like you, it's hard to continue to raise your standards. Mm -hmm. But then I come back out here It'd be like getting a fresh battery put in yeah and then i'd run hot for like three months <laughs> and that. uh you know we just we just keep rolling but um what what about the hate you got let's mm -hmm. talk about that because usually when someone raise their hand and they decide yep. they want to change um people that are in their current life yeah will tend you guys will learn this um when you change you're going to meet future people that will massively support you they're like, oh my God, I love who you are. I love this. I need to be around you more. Yeah. But you'll, your current people that you're around now, when you make a decision to reach for more, to grow, which mm -hmm. is what changing is when you decide to grow, they make fun of you and they don't like that. Right? Absolutely. Um, so like, how did you handle like the hate? Because I know you got made fun of a lot yeah. by studying, practicing, role playing, writing down word tracks. Totally, to, dude. Like, like. Like, I know that you got made fun of. So, like, h how did you push through that? Yeah, well, you have to be more committed to your future, and your vision, than you are to how people feel about you in the current moment. Ooh, that's a good one. You, you know guys what I'm need to write that down. You said be yep. more committed to your future. Yep. Because I will say, I didn't get psycho. Like, I would say today, I'm 
crazy as mm-hmm. shit. I mean, I'm like, I've accepted that I'm living a different life. Like when, when you're, no you're, one can yeah. unchange you anymore. Totally. Like yeah. when you're in, when you're, when we're in your meetings, I'm like, you see me, I'm like this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like, let's do it. Yeah. Cause like I'm officially programmed and there's no going, you can't convince me yeah. of another way to live now. And we, I carry that with me. So if I go to a different room where you're not in it, people know that the fucking Elliot group's in it. They know it. Yeah. And I, which, I knew that. Which that, is a movement. Yeah. Just everybody knows. It, mm-hmm. It's a it's a standard that we live by. Yeah. It's just a human excellent standard. And and you not changing back has yep. probably been what's gotten you to this seven figure mark because you mm-hmm. don't you don't back up. Like a lot of people backslide. Yeah. Right. They come out to an event. I'm just giving an example. Mm -hmm. And then we never see him again. Exactly. And they go home, kick ass, do great. Two, three months later, you know, everybody's like, oh man, you know, you came all hyped up and motivated from that event and did good. But now what are you doing? How important is it to stay plugged in? Yeah, it's absolutely everything, man. I mean, going back to that, like now I'm to whatever grows you like to stay plugged into that. Like right, like right now I'm literally crazy, but it took a couple of times coming out for me to really like my subconscious mind to really accept like this is who I am and uh yeah dude I mean you you coached me through it by the way like after the first event you were like get him out of your life like you and you one thing that you helped me do that a lot of people need coaching with is you help me determine who needs to stay and who needs to go Mm -hmm. and like how to use your intuition to find out who's the right people who's the right people to have in your circle you know because some people had to go and Mm -hmm. some people that had to go were family but there were some people who needed to stay like, you know, and me, and by the way, like one thing I'll say that I learned from you is the power of a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like Gia is everything to me. And I would not, I wouldn't be here literally without, without her. And, uh, because you said that. Yeah. Yeah. Because a good personal life Mm -hmm. makes you dangerous in business. Yeah. If you were just working hard and you didn't have that great personal life, you wouldn't work as hard. Totally. You wouldn't want it as much. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. like you have love from the home and when you are intense at work and you kill it here, you also go to the home, you go to that unit and mm-hmm. bring the same standards, the same levels. Yeah. You know? G, G is so grateful for the Ellie group, by the way. Like, it's so funny because we were sitting at the first event and she's like, we got to come back. Let's plan our trip to come back like right now. Cause yeah. I need, I need to see you like this every single day for the rest of my life. Yeah. You know? Now she does. Exactly. Yeah. And, and let's talk about how important it is, um, even to this point, mm-hmm. to like staying close to what's good for you. Like you yep. work here now. We're here. We, yep. we run this. We're all kicking ass. Yeah. But can you tell like, just like when you trained, when you used mm-hmm. to travel out here, even though that you're here now, yep. like if you're so busy working, but you don't get close to me and we don't plug in, you can mm-hmm. probably feel a difference so true. in the production. So like when you have a coach, like you need to lean all into that coach, yep. right? Like, would you, I mean, like, would you agree that like, totally, just dude. because you did it for a little bit, mm-hmm. once you kill it, like, it's like, use it or lose it, yep. right? You either keep doing it or eventually you will go back. Yeah. And I would say that. The only thing, like you say this all the time, but the only thing that could hurt hurt your hurt your life when you're here and you're around the right people in the right environment is yourself. Mm-hmm. It could be the devil creeping in in your head. Yeah, he's good at telling you lies. Yeah, and I mean that happens to people all the time. Most of the time, people self sabotage. That's it's really the reason that people don't make it. It's never anybody else's fault. Um, let's talk know? about what like for maybe two minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you see people self sabotage? Like what kind yeah. of lies do they tell themselves? Like, what do you see people do? I mean, to me, like, and I probably feel this way because you always say you're the most qualified to help somebody who's been where you've been at before. Right. Yeah. And what held me back was always limiting beliefs. Yeah, like and I didn't even you're immensely qualified. If yeah. you can overcome limiting beliefs, mm-hmm. you can help someone else overcome them. That's because that's, your yeah. greatest struggle is now you're a strength, you're a strength and a coach for struggles like that. Yeah. And I feel like that right there is what holds everybody back is they have limiting beliefs about success. And there's beliefs that you know that you have. And then there's the ones that you don't know that you have until you get around the right coach who can help you identify those things. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like yeah. you told me Facts. to read a book called the mindset of a sales warrior. Mm-hmm. And I devoured that thing because I was like, good this book. is speaking to my soul, like talking about the leashes that people have mm-hmm. and the, their problems they have with their self image. Mm-hmm. And I realized all along that, you know, 
that was my biggest problem was I had this self image of, I had to start looking at myself differently, which is where working out comes in. And like, there's so many different things, but just being able to see yourself different, like, and you know, the whole concept that got me hooked with your training in the first place, total recreation mm -hmm. that the just old is gone. The yourself. new has come. Yeah. That like, and you got to kill your old self, literally, yeah. you know? Yeah. That's biblical. You can't get a new life if you don't yeah. give up your old one. And you know, so many people, they want to keep their old past with them mm -hmm. and they can't get into the future. Yeah. And so a, another good book was be your, be your future self now, Love that right? One. That's that a so killer good. book. Yeah. And so in that book, it was talking about mindset of the sales warrior. It talks about knowledge plus performance minus leashes, mm -hmm. right? Remember that yep. knowledge. What does that mean? New information. You mm -hmm. took new information. You're thinking different plus yep. performance. What does that mean? You got to work hard. Yep. Once you get the new knowledge, like if this, everybody could take the information on the internet right now, mm -hmm. they could become rich if they just work hard with it yep. and not quit. So knowledge, which is like the information we learn yep. plus performance, which is the hard work. Mm -hmm. And then you said minus leashes, which is anything that you're making excuse of. I'm not good at this. I can't do that. Things like yep. that don't work for people like me or, you know, any of those little things that prevent you from growth. Super important guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Yeah. They're just growth killers. You know what I mean? Exactly. And by the way, like what I really think why you grew so much is you finally became a leader. You're not a salesperson. Mm -hmm. And this is important. You finally became a, a, a leader. Yep. And, and the, the chokehold on every company and on every income is the leader. Yep. And so that the level of your leadership will lead into the quality of your life. Yeah. Like, so like how qualified are you as a leader and what is a leader? A leader is someone who self leads mm -hmm. and every day you're waking up, you're working out, you're taking care of yourself. You're coming into the office, you're disciplined, you're saying no to distractions, your yep. time block on your day, you're planning, you know, people don't plan to fail. They fail to plan. So you're planning yep. your day out. You know what it looks like when you go home with Gia, you know what your night looks like finishing yep. up your call. You, you know what your whole day looks like. I mean, dude, you're physically self leading at a really high level. Yep. You have good moral authority. Authority, right what does that mean you are who you say you are you're not yeah. a fraud you're not fake um, and you get results yeah which at the end of the day I'll tell you like that's a big deal to me like I mean I think you know when you build a new identity like you have the opportunity now where the old is dead and the news here and you, exactly. you, you go get these results yeah and um, I think that your level of leadership is and you matured Mm -hmm. For 24 years old, I mean, I'm going to tell you, you're way more mature than me than I was when I was 24 years old. Yep. And I think when you're around mature people, like you get mature. Yeah. And if you're around immature people, you act immature. Totally agree. You know, you yeah. and you being around me and Jackie, you know, yeah. she, I'm 44, she's 42. We have a fire marriage. Mm -hmm. But I wish me and her when I was 26 and she was 24, I wish we were around someone who was 20 years older than us with a fire marriage. Yep. God, that would have saved us 10 years of hell. So grateful for it. Right? But that mm -hmm. maturity, bringing that into your marriage now, yeah. young, understanding how to fight about things, understanding, you know, how to be fair with each other. Like, dude, like, remember what I said? If there's two people, let's say there's Brendan and then there's Joe. And Brendan has a kick-ass, you know, uh, personal life, but he's also badass at business. But Joe doesn't have a kick-ass personal life, but he's awesome at business. Brendan's going to smoke Joe. The reason yeah. why is because Joe is going to run to his business and run to his work, which he loves and run yeah. from his family because his family life isn't great. And so eventually true. it's going to create this wedge and Joe's going to build this big hole in his heart because he knows that his main responsibility isn't making money. It's his family yeah. and he's not taking care of his family. But the only thing that makes him feel alive is his work. Mm -hmm. And so he buries his family and one day he wakes up and they leave yeah. him. So he had this, which was his family, all a man mm -hmm. needed. And he left this for this. Yeah. And now he's going to lose this and he's going to hate this. Yep. And so, so true. I think like you building your personal life with Gia, like mm -hmm. when you said like, I love her, she's everything to me. I wouldn't be here without her. What he's saying is he found the love of his life, but his personal life is so good. It allows him to thrive in business. Exactly. And honestly, he's the leader at home. He's a leader in the community. When you go to the community, like mm -hmm. people that you wouldn't once be interested in, you're like running into people and making their lives better. Yep. 
like and nothing in return just like hey all i want to do is leave you better than i found so you true. dude when you do that i said like moral authority you start walking around different you start carrying yourself different dude gia recognizes mm-hmm. she's like oh my god i got a good man like i can't believe yeah. this and then at the end of the day you look in the mirror and i think you're really proud of you yep. and having parents that were drug addicts or drank or partied or divorced and you know it was crazy and shit dude when you go through those things, like you don't feel much value in yourself as a kid so because true. you see your buddies that drive the expensive cars and they yep. got the nice shit and their parents so look like they're holding hands and going to church every Sunday. And dude, that's so funny you say that, man. I, it, I like I think about that all the time. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm like I'm like, like, are we Jerry Springer? Dude, I'm like literally. thinking, yeah. I resonated hard with that, dude. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so funny because we just had a meeting. You said if you want an individual. If you had to make make an individual and you wanted them to be tough. Yeah, if you had to make a human being. Would you give them an easy life or would you give them a hard life and put them through a lot of, under a lot of stress and pressure? Yeah, pressure. And we all we all know the answer. And I I thought I think it's so funny because nowadays we're me and G are financially we're making a lot of progress. Mm-hmm. We're driving nice cars, we live in a nice house, we have a lot of nice things. And I tell her all the time, I say, I'm so grateful I had to earn this shit. Because if I would have got it, like the guys, some of the guys I worked with were also my age, driving, you know, nice cars because their parents co-signed for them and bought it. I drove a beater. I drove a $3,000 Jeep that Mm -hmm. I paid for with my 490 credit score Mm -hmm. and 500 bucks down. And I got made fun of for driving that car. And I was driving that car and I was busting my ass at work, working 80 hours a week, running to grab keys. And people made fun of me still, but I knew where I was headed. Yeah. They, they told me all the time, they said, bro, no matter how, how hard you try to outrun this or how much you try to be like the Elliot group, you're not going to make it. I'm like, we'll fucking see about that. Yeah. And you know? that is, I call this cause you're, you're going to be rich mm-hmm. and you'll never become a rich person. You'll yeah. always be a broke person with money. Yeah. What does that mean? That means you'll believe in people that are poor. Yep. You'll believe in people that are broken. You'll see people with scars and go, hey, look at me. I got scars too. Yeah. Now what? Let's go turn our wounds into our weapons. Like, let's go crush this shit. Like, yep. let's create, gener- let's break generational curses. Let's, yep. let's, let, let, let's break your bloodline. I mm-hmm. broke my bloodline. Let's break your bloodline. Rich people that didn't have to earn stuff don't talk to people like that. Exactly. Because they're always at a higher level. I may be at a higher level, right? Like here that I've trained myself and I'm prepared. Mm-hmm. It's called preparation. Like I'm here. I'm yep. ready to go to war. But when I see someone hurting, my heart says, dude, I got to help that guy. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I think, and I never had anybody that was rich ever want to help me. Mm-hmm. And so like, I despise rich people when I was younger. And then yeah. now as I've gained um, income and money and, you know, I'm financially set, I'm like, dude, I'm a broke person with money. I never yeah. want to be rich. I, love um, I just want to help as many people as I can. And I think that's the secret sauce to like the Elliott group. Because yeah. a lot of people don't know this, but it's not Andy Elliott. It's, it's the Elliott group. It's a group of people that literally have created an environment and a movement and together an individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. We just sweep through a nation together, changing people's lives. And it's truly a ministry. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I just, guys, I wanted to introduce you to Brendan. He's a, he's a badass. He's super cool. He's 24 years old, man. That's just crazy. Um, but the coolest thing is, is he's super intelligent, super smart. Um, he self-corrects very quick. So like when you find holes, you like yeah. self-correct. Um, he doesn't have any ego. He loves his girl. He take, loves his clients. Um, you guys can reach out to him. Whatever you guys need, reach out to him. Tell him what you need. Tell him what you need help with. It doesn't matter what industry, and we don't care. We train every industry. Um, you know, just reach out to him. That'd be awesome. Where do they find you on Instagram? Hell yeah. Instagram's official Brendan Whiting, B-R-E-N-D-A-N. W H I T I N G and my cell phone is six one eight three zero five four zero seven zero. That's it, guys. You know how to get a hold of them, man. I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. We're gonna take over the world. All right, guys. Love you. It's been a good thirty minutes. We'll see you in the next podcast. Let's kick some ass. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.